It's another episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. On this episode, we're going to go back to our What If series. On this episode, we take a look back to the first iteration of the Winnipeg Jets. I'm asking the question, what if the Jets did not trade Timu Solani? That's on today's episode of Locked On Coyotes. Your Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Robin Leonio. That's Carl Pavlock right beside me on today's episode of Locked On Coyotes. I want to thank everyone for making this show your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube. we got a great show for you guys on today's episode. We're going back to our What If series. We're going to talk, go back to the Winnipeg Jets 1.0, um, the... Uh, the history of the Phoenix Coyotes um, before, you know, the you know, where they were before and go to the what if of what if they did not trade team Rusalani because um, shortly before the Winnipeg Jets moved to Arizona to become the Phoenix Coyotes, they traded away team Rusalani, Carl, to the mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Yep. Uh, this happened back in 1996, so everyone has fun names uh, that no longer exist anymore. Um, there was a lot that I remember hearing about this trade. Um, the fact that the the Phoenix Coyotes were apparently looking to market Timo Solani like, as one of their big names, uh, but apparently management also signed off on the trade. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting situation. Uh, although I will go on to say that you know Timu went on to be a dominant player for over a decade after that trade, uh, so I don't know why the Winnipeg Jets slash Phoenix Coyotes organization at the time wanted to trade him, but it happened, and it's you know been a pretty big point in in the franchise history, even though it happened before the franchise relocated to what it is now. Yeah, exactly. So, like, a lot of you might ask the question, you know, it's like, oh, if this happened during the Winnipeg Jets era, you know, then why talk about it? Why not let the Jets people talk about it? Uh, but, again, like I, like like we were saying, you know, they, like, the like I don't care who you are, we're going to assume the history of the previous Jets because that's it, continuation. Makes it easy. Um, yeah, and also, like, this happened in 96. That's when the Coyotes moved, like, relocated um and then for what over 20 years there were no winnipeg jets like the only place you can go for that history was the arizona Coy- or was the phoenix coyotes uh i think they were still the phoenix coyotes when the jets came on so i can't even they say the that arizona coyotes by then yeah um but you know just like the colorado avalanche honor the history of the quebec nordiques in a way I, I do think that it is appropriate that the Coyotes honor the history of the Winnipeg Jets 1.0. And it'd be appropriate if the Winnipeg Jets honored the Atlanta Thrashers, but they don't. So, yeah. Uh, does that mean that the uh, the Calgary Flames are going to honor the Atlanta Flames? Uh, that's, that's a bit further back, but they do. Um, the A for the assistant captain... You're is right. the Atlanta Flames cat? You're right. Hey. You're right. Um, but I, 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 mean, I could go further back and just joke about as much as I can of these. I can be like, what about the New Jersey Devils of the Kansas City Scouts? Or you know, <laughs> honestly, yeah, there. I, I think that the New Jersey Devils honor the Scouts more than the Jets honor the Thrashers. It, it is one of those things where the. The Winnipeg Jets, at least from the outside, seem to be embarrassed by that history. And, I mean, one of the reasons that we're doing this episode is because the Jets announced that they're honoring Timu Solani. Uh, And um, 
Crap, who else is it? This is going to sound bad because he was the Coyote. Um, <laughs> Tepo Nam. Nuam. Ah, Tepo Nuam. Ah, I cannot speak tonight. You, Tepo. <laughs> Do you want to go for it? Um, hold on. I, I, I don't think my brain is ready for it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh most embarrassing thing uh we've done i know right tepo if you're listening to this i am extremely sorry that i butchered the pronunciation of your surname no i'm not I, like i'm not doing it <laughs> i'm sorry i i, I, I my, my i'm at my brain is too fried to try to try for it but yes i know it yeah exactly um the fact that he played with Winnipeg and he played with Phoenix Coyotes, um, you know, um, obviously Team Musani didn't. And that's why we're talking about this, right? Because he didn't. He was got traded right before. Um, there's yeah. a lot to get to that, right? Because, you know, and that's what the what, that's what the what if is about. Like, imagine what would have happened if Team Musani wasn't traded. Because like you said at the beginning, Carl, the fact that he, like, that the, you know, you know, the, Phoenix was getting ready to freaking market this dude like crazy because he was already good by then. But then he went after, you know, shortly afterwards, he ended up becoming, you know, one of the most, you know, one of the top players in the world. Um, yeah. And he had that 76 goal rookie season. Can you even imagine like 92, 93? 76 goals in 84 games, 56 assists, just insane. But, like, you know, his first full two full seasons in Anaheim, he had 51 goals, 52. Like, he is definitely a player that the Coyotes could have used. And I think the fact that he went back to Anaheim, that he had that loyalty, and then you look at what he was doing during the 2010-2011 season, uh, 31 goals, 49 assists in 73 games. That was the season that the Coyotes made it to the Western Conference Finals. If you have that extra offensive push, like that is something. Like The reason I think team was a lot... Ooh, go ahead. I was going to say, the one, one of the things that is interesting to think about, though, are the fact that, you know... The um, the Mighty Ducks were like had him for like five years, and then he went to a different teams for a little bit. You know, he went to two other teams before he returned back to Anaheim. Um, Plus, uh, he went overseas for a couple of years, I believe. Didn't um, he? That was before he was with. Uh, well, oh no, I'm thinking. Of, I'm thinking of Yager. Yager went yeah. overseas. Um, but. You know, Solani after oh after the oh one season with the, with the Mighty Ducks, he went over to uh to San Jose, and then he went um went to Colorado. Um, so my thing my my thinking is, you know, would he had a similar thing with Phoenix, or like, or would maybe he had a decent pairing because he was paired out with Paul Caria like in the other in, in with uh. In, in in Anaheim, right? Yeah. Well, I, I do think that the fact that he came back for another nine seasons, that says something, uh, is he loved Phoenix... It he loved it there. Yeah. yeah. Would he have loved Phoenix as much as he loved Anaheim? Who could say? Uh, a lot of players do really love Phoenix, especially, you know, a lot of players retire there. But Anaheim is definitely a very specific town. Like, there's plenty of love about it. So I I really don't know if he would have had that same career path. But I think that is the thing that makes him so interesting, the fact that he did have that career with Anaheim. Yeah, absolutely. Um, That's the... um... Uh, that's the thing, because that you know, thinking about how that works too, with uh, with how it was. It, it, again, like I said, it it just showed that he really loved it there, and that um, it and, and it really spoke. What do you like the same thing with 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 Phoenix? I mean, that's you know, obviously it's remained to be seen. Ever, I mean, we would never see it because he that it's just not gonna happen. You know, that never happened. 
Um, but who maybe he, like, um, you know, who on that team would have made the team marketable and everything like that? How different would the, would the Coyotes have looked, right? I do think he probably would have found like some pretty good like chemistry with Redeem Verbata. Uh, although the issue was with the Coyotes at the time, they never had the center. But does like having a player like Timo Solani bring in the talent? I, that's why I think it's kind of like impossible to say um, if he would have come back. But I, I think there's a chance like what he did with Anaheim kind of says something about his loyalty to a franchise. Yeah, I mean, he was just like he was like he was a dominant player, absolutely, no, no, no doubt about it. Anyways, though, um, we're gonna get to more of this talk. What if Team Ruslani was not traded by the Winnipeg Jets in just a moment? But first, we're gonna turn to Carl for a quick word. So I have a message from our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports information this season. You can find all the latest sports league developments including football, uh, game matchups, news, and podcasts, and this year's opening week's games. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, so uh, another thing I want to take a look at as we talk about what the, um, you know, this whole trade, you know, Team Ruslani going from the Winnipeg Jets to the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim um, in 96, I think we have to also discuss of what was also involved in that trade, Carl, and I think you have some of the details of that trade and, you know, what also could have been different. Yeah, so... Uh... Honestly, like the fact that this was the trade for Team Uslani should be a crime. Like uh, that Mighty Ducks of Anaheim got a 96 fourth round pick, uh, which was used to draft Kim Stahl, unrelated to the Stahl brothers out of Canada. Uh, Team Uslani and Mark Chayanard. This is a, a bad podcast for me pronouncing names from the 90s that I don't know. Uh, and the Winnipeg Jets received Chad King, King, Kill, Kilger, uh, Oleg Trevdovsky, uh, and a 1996 third round pick, which was used to draft Per Anton Lundstrom. Uh, one of the reasons why all of these names were pronounced or difficult for me to pronounce is they did not have much to do with the coyotes. Uh, although Tepo Neman uh, also threw me earlier on. Uh, hopefully I'm getting it now, but yeah, um, they not a good trade no, at Newman all. In, I think Newman. Yeah. Newman in Newman. In. Uh, Chad Kilger only lasted 10 games with the Coyotes. He had an assist. Uh, looks like he spent some time in the AHL. Uh, Oleg uh, played eight, a full season with the Coyotes. Um, actually, no. Looks like he had uh, parts of... Th Let's see. Uh, yeah, parts of three. Ended up going back to the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Uh, and then the pick that was used to draft uh pair on Tomlin Shrum. Uh, I don't think he made the NHL. So yeah, so this trade was a hundred percent one sided and you know so essentially like a lot of people were probably banging themselves in the head like man this trade should have never happened. No, no, absolutely not. And like it, it was so immediate when that decision like came down, like because right away he had that fifty goal season. Like it, it, it should have been like pretty instant. Like oh, this guy was not someone who was past his prime. Yeah, I mean, I'll be also to be fair, he was paired with Paul Carrier, like I mentioned earlier, like that first year. But like, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. that does say something. 
right? You know, like a lot of people, there's a reason why, you know, if you're a Ducks fan, you know the fact that that, kid, that guy's name is freaking raised as a in Jersey retirement. You know, no one's going to wear Kyrie's, num- Kyrie's number again because of you know, how good he was. Um, yeah. But we're not in we're not in a Hanaheim show because we're not going to talk about that. But you know, but the fact that team was signing with paired with them did make much that that much of a difference. It, it definitely made a difference, um, but still, just like looking at this return, it's not well, that much of a difference. Is still, me, this return is is just criminal. It, yeah. it is absolutely criminal because, like, yeah, you are giving up a MVP. Um, obviously, didn't really know too much at the time, but an MVP, Rocket Rashad winner. You know, so many freaking accolades for nothing. Yeah, and, and and like we said at the top, he's a player who you could market a team around. Like he, you know, had taken a bit of a slump, but he was still phenomenal. He still had that great rookie career, and like people knew his name. He he wasn't yet the player who he would become like the player who i discovered when i started watching hockey years later over a two decades later like i said but he was still in the game and the fact that he made it two decades over two decades it really says something one thing i'm actually curious about and i want to do do this discussion for you know the 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 all intents and purposes but the idea that let's say you know obviously we saw that he got you know he left anaheim and went to a couple teams and then went back to anaheim but let's say you know for this reason that he stuck around in phoenix and whatever like there could have been a decent amount of players that like either a decided not to play for the coyotes or you know go through that period of turmoil in the early two thousand in the early to mid 2000s that could have definitely changed the tra- trajectory of the franchise yeah, uh, I should say a decade and a half later because it wasn't exactly two decades when I started watching him, a uh, decade and a half. But you are absolutely correct. Um, there was quite a, t- a time where, like, you know, the team had drafted Blake Wheeler and Kyle Turris, and these were two players who didn't seem to want to deal with the situation. But if there was a chance to play with Timu, like, that would have made a difference. It could have changed. It really could have changed. And like, and to think of at any point in time that those three players could have been on the ice, you know, together, <laughs> like that just is just like, oh my God, like what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like it, it, let's say you are Dave Tippett, uh, Kyle Turris is happy. So you're playing him. Uh, you're doing a line with like Turis, Solani, and Redeem Verbata, and it's 2011. I think that's a solid line. That is a really good line. Absolutely, like that is a really good like that because th- th- that those playoff Coyotes could have done s- some more damage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like uh, Martin Hansel and. Uh, See, I'm I'm never really sure what to think of Martin Hansel as a player. Would he have been able to bring out something from from Timu, or would Timu have been able to bring something out from him? Because you know that's the thing about a a veteran. Not only do they like you know need support, they could bring out the best in a player. And the Coyotes, you know, they had Shane Down, they had Redeem Verbata, they they had a couple of guys who were like that, but nobody like Timu. No, no real superstar. Exactly, and I think that could and been that right. Um, he could have he could have made that difference because you look at what he did in his second time with um, with Anaheim and bringing him to the postseason on so many years and um, including like a Stanley Cup final and like you're just like, dude, like you are a superstar. Like no, yeah. way, there's no, there's no way around it. And like, it, like Timu Solani's name, you just mentioned him anywhere around the NHL, and you're gonna, people are gonna know who you, who the frick you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. And it's you know the fact that he did most of that with the Ducks, a you know a non traditional market, I think also says a lot because you don't necessarily get too many like major Sun Belt superstars. 
Yeah. Um, that's true. Up until like the Tampa Bay Lightning, who I think got like all of the superstars at one point, and the current, you know, Vegas Golden Knights method of like draft or like acquiring all the superstars. But like for a player who was the era when the when like everyone dismissed the Sun Belt as just like irrelevant. Yeah, yeah. You know, Gretzky had gone to Los Angeles, I think, by that point, if I recall. But, you know, it was right about that time where, like, the same teams were being taken seriously. Like, the 90s were a, a fun time for hockey. Yeah, because, um, what, like, like, the 90s is when the West Coast and the South decided to be like, hey, guess what? We exist, too. What? Yeah. Um, that's when Minnesota re- relocated to Dallas. Um, it's when San Jose expanded. It's when Anaheim expanded. It's when um, L.A. was has been around for already a long time, but. Um, and, and that's when, uh, Winnipeg moved to Phoenix. Like, you know, you had a lot of people move down to that market because, and it, and and for the most part, it worked for a lot of those players, for a lot of those teams. And it has worked because they've been, a lot of them has still, they're still around. So. Yeah. And like I said earlier, the, the Nordiques moving to Denver, I think was also part of that. And also a pretty big key. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anything else you want to talk touch on? Um, uh, do you think that a superstar player like Timu could have provided more stabilization for the franchise, or is that too far? I think it's a little too far because I think you can't really take into account um, what's going to happen with the, like, you know, ownership and management. You just don't. Yeah. That is very true. That is absolutely true. And honestly, like, that's probably what it, where it would have been the kicker. Because I know, like, Redeem Verbata left because he was upset that he couldn't get a raise even though he absolutely earned one um that that probably would have seen a, a better departure for timu um and, just and because... i think a lot of this also goes into the fact and i hate to say it you know and it, and like and maybe that w- it would have affected Timu sticking around too if if this were to be the case but the coyotes decision to move to glendale mm. Cause yeah, as we've Cause, been talking about, like it was, we we realized we realized that was not a good decision. It just did not work out for the team. Yeah, the, it, it was a it was a move that made sense at the time. Because uh, I was I was in Arizona um, in two thousand, so I I understand the logic of that move. I always will, but. Uh, I'm pretty sure Timo Solani could not have solved uh, the recession or the housing crisis in the, you know, early aughts that really caused uh, the West Valley to fall out of favor and things to start moving back east. Uh, and that's what would have been, been needed. Like, mm-hmm. if the West Valley had continued their growth in the way that they were doing in the early aughts, Kilo River Arena may have been fine, but. Uh, I I don't think Timu could fix a recession. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So, so asking a bit too much for him. Yeah. So that so that that's what I had to put into that. That's what that's where I kind of had to think about it. I'm just like, you can't really you you can't really say Timu is going to fix an economic problem in the in 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 the valley. Like it's just. <laughs> um, so that would have been another another question of whether or not he would have stuck around because obviously they probably couldn't afford to keep him around. Maybe I don't know. Um, or hang on, let me let me just say this: Timu is still with the team. You get even more Winnipeg people down. Uh, get more snowbirds. Have Phoenix be the undisputed. Winnipeg slash Manitoba snowbird spot uh, still probably wouldn't work, but yeah, yeah, that that's uh, that's the one problem when it comes to the Coyotes. Uh, some of their problems are in their control, and others are sadly outside of it. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, anyways, though, um, unless we, unless you have anything else you'd like to add, I think we're, you can go. I just want to apologize one more time to Teppo for, uh, getting his name wrong. (laughs) Um, yeah, you know, unfortunately, you know, we're like with hockey, sometimes we're going to get people's name wrong, um, or mispronounce their names, but we try, we try. Well, at least you did. I just, just, I decided to steer away from that. Um, for the most part. this is a bit too much uh, how the sausage gets made. Usually I'll, I'll listen to a pronunciation guide. Uh, I thought we were going to be able to focus this one all on Timu, uh, but no, no, we we couldn't. Uh, so, uh, yep, got kind of thrown out there. And uh, Teppo is definitely a very important figure in the Coyotes. He was the second captain, um, phenomenal defenseman, um, but um, – I am more used to seeing his name written out than Than actually having to pronounce it. Yep. (laughs) Yep. Anyways, though, that's going to be it for today's episode of Locked on Coyotes. If you like what you heard, don't forget to leave a review, like, comment, subscribe if you have yet to already. We're available everywhere you get your podcasts, including on YouTube. Of course, you can leave a comment on YouTube and let us know um, if there is any other what-if scenarios you would like us to touch on for this podcast we will can put we will take into um, as much to the consideration as all suggestions as possible so we're gonna so feel free to send them your our way but also don't forget to interact with us on social media we're on facebook facebook.com slash locked on coyotes on instagram at locked on coyotes and on twitter lo underscore coyotes i am personally at robin underscore leonio carl pavlock is at carl pavlock ffh interact with us ask a question you might have we might answer right back or on a future episode of the locked on coyotes podcast thanks again everyone for listening to today's episode hope you're staying safe out there hope you're staying healthy and don't forget to howl on.